Okay, so um, this operation where I can, you know, combine the two base terms and, and just subtract the exponents only works when the base terms are the same, so when it's a over a. Um, if you have some sort of, um, you know, uh, some sort of situation where you have a to the b and then some other number c to some other exponent d, there's, there's uh, not a lot that you can do here. I, I would hate to see anyone make a mistake along the lines of saying that it's a minus d over c or something like that. This, uh, this, it does not work like this. We always have to stick this, uh, this, this exponent subtraction here only happens when the base is the same. Okay, and so then this applies also, um, let's see if I have a times, or a raised to the b times a raised to the c is equal to a to the b plus c. So I can, I can add those together. Okay. Now, um, continuing with exponents, kind of a, a unique case of exponents, let's look at the square root function. So let's say I have the square root of a. The square root of a is equal to a to the one-half. A square root is when the exponent is a fraction, uh, well, specifically one-half, the fraction one-half. Um, and so you can use these interchangeably. So likewise, if you have 1 over the square root, that's equal to a to the negative 1 half. L using this can be really helpful when you're taking derivatives. Because you look at the square root, and it's not immediately obvious what the derivative is. But if you convert it over into writing it this way, it's more clear what the derivative is. We'll see that when we do some deriv um, in, a, in another video in which... Uh, we'll do derivative derivative examples. So then, let's say let's say I had the square root of a times b. Well, this would be the same thing as a times b to the one half, which is the same thing as a to the one half times b to the one half, using the um, the exponent rules that we were um, just speaking about. Okay. All right, let's do some equation simplification. Okay, what are some, some things that we can do to simplify an equation? Let's start with an example uh, let's say I have a plus b equals zero. One thing I can do is that I can, I can add the same number to both sides of an equation at any time. I can subtract the same number from both sides of an equation at any time. So let's say, let's say I can do this. a plus b minus a equals minus a. I can do that. I've subtracted a from both sides of the equation. I recognize that a minus a is zero, so then this becomes b equals minus a. So let's just indicate that. Okay, that's kind of the first one. So this basically tells me that if I have an equation, I can move something from one side of the equation to the other if I just put a minus sign on it if I change the sign. Using the same approach, I can say that, let's say I took this same equation, I'm going to come over here and do the opposite, where I'm going to take b to the other side. I'm going to um, subtract b from both sides of the equation. So that's a plus b minus b equals minus b. B's, what B minus B is zero, so that just becomes A equals minus B. Okay. 
Okay, next one. I can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number. So let's say I have a equals b. If I have a equals b, I can multiply both sides of this equation by the same number, and it remains equal. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by c. c times a equals c times b. Likewise, I can divide both sides of the equation by a number, by a single number, and it would remain equal. So let's say if a equals b, I can divide both sides by c, a over c equals b over c. Sometimes this type of operation can be really helpful. So let's look at something like this. Imagine I have a over um, c equals b. <clears throat> I can multiply both sides of this equation by c. Multiply by c, multiply by c. I notice the c's cancel out. And I have a equals b times c. So this has become a helpful trick. If I have a situation where I have, um, let me just write it over here. If I, let's say I have a situation where I have a over c and it equals b, I can rearrange, multiply both sides by c, and that becomes a equals bc. Okay. One thing that'll be important to notice, let's say, like we, our example up here, a equals negative b. When I see a negative number, I can also think about that. I can think about this negative number as, um, I can say negative b, I can think about it as negative 1 times b. I can think about that. So then here, I can divide both sides. Let's say I, div I um, let's say multiply, multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. Times negative 1. When you multiply two negative numbers, you get a positive number. When you multiply a positive number times a negative number, you get a negative number. So that means negative a equals b. So this just kind of this kind of proves what we had up here. These two equations um, tell us the same information. Okay, sometimes that can be really helpful um, to move negative signs across an equation. Okay. Another helpful trick that you might run into um, or you might need is to recognize that you can multiply um, any number by one at any time. So let's say I have, let's say that I have um, a equals b. Okay, and now I'm just going to point out to make a little observ make an observation over here. Any number divided by itself equals 1. So if I have a divided by a, that equals 1. b divided by b equals 1. Any number divided by itself equals 1. So I can multiply any number by 1 at any time that I want. That can be helpful. So I could do this. I could say I'm going to multiply a times 1. Except instead of writing just the number one, I'm going to write, I'm going to write, um, I'm going to write c over c. So I can have c times a over c equals b. And these are going to be equal. Now, of course, we can cancel the c out, but there can be situations in which. I might want to multiply a number by 1, and I might want to call that number 1 um, something different. Let me give you an example. This came up in the other video. 
just to make this point clear. In the other video, we had a situation where we had 1 plus 1 minus alpha over alpha. And we looked at that and we said, huh, uh, we might be able to simplify this expression because we can recognize that 1 is um, that alpha over alpha is equal to 1 because any number divided by itself is equal to 1. So 1, I can say that 1 equals alpha over alpha. That means I can, I can express this, this equation as alpha over alpha plus 1 minus alpha over alpha. And then I can use my um, rules of, of, um, of fractions and say, hey, these two have the same denominator. That means I can combine these into 1 and add the numerators. So then this would become equal to alpha plus 1 minus alpha over alpha, which is the same thing as alpha plus 1 minus alpha over alpha. Alpha minus alpha is 0, so this equals 1 over alpha. Okay, I hope that that algebra review will be helpful and we can revisit algebra in the future uh, if we discover more tricks that we might need. And I also recommend going to the other video in which I solve a utility maximization problem um, and point out the algebra along the way. So thank you very much, and I hope you're doing well.